Good evening everyone, time for another member update. So we're going to spend the whole night tonight on this, what I will call colossal stupidity, this uh, article that was on Zero Hedge back on the 13th about um, this is what 700 quintillion could buy you today and it's about mining space and it's just, it's so ridiculous, it's so absurd but it gives us some insights into I think what they have planned for us I'm not sure we'll dig deeper into it but let's get over to the cryptocurrencies here now Bitcoin cash when I did that flipping video um, I think it was approaching 2000 and it actually ran to 3000 and it had a huge crash and Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash were trading sort of inverse to each other. You can see here if we, uh, I think if we do 24 hour volume, it'll show those next to each other. Yeah, so it shows Bitcoin Cash number two and Bitcoin up here. And you can see at this part in the chart, they were moving in opposite directions. So this is the big reversal here when Bitcoin cash topped you can see that Bitcoin put in a bottom and then it uh, rallied then failed and then it went to an extended rally now do I still think there's gonna be a flippening I I don't know I'm currently long Bitcoin cash right now I got in a, a, you know under a thousand recently based on the technicals of this chart just thinking that we had probably found a bottom somewhere in here so I'm currently long Bitcoin cash but I'm also currently long Bitcoin and so and you can see here when you add the two together with Bitcoin trading at 7740 and Bitcoin cash at 1247 that gives us a com combined price of about 9000 bucks and that's one of the highest combined prices we've ever seen and then when you add in the others that are starting to make a move we've got dash you can see litecoins at sixty seven dollars so it i mean litecoins not in the new all-time highs but it's definitely uh... moving towards them in fact litecoin may make a very good short-term play here for traders if you want to trade litecoin i think probably an opportunity is going to come up here if Litecoin is going to make a test of that old $90 high. So some of these others you can see Ethereum it's it's still not near all-time highs but it, Ethereum is forming up a pennant here. So and then of course Dash has been very strong. Dash is almost $500. You can see it did get into a new all-time high and it's trying to consolidate now. So when you add all that together that gives us a total crypto market cap of 232 billion dollars now that's if not the highest that that's the highest we've ever seen and you remember my prediction was a trillion dollar market cap by the end of the year um, it's possible it's probably more likely going to be about three or four hundred billion but uh, these these things can make crazy moves and you know if you look at the Bitcoin chart it just recently hit 8,000 and let's let's get into the 24 hours so we can see how recent that was I'll move it out to the two-day chart so you can see right here we got 8,040 and that was uh, just a day ago so it's pulled back from there but as I said before anything that's going into an all-time high a new all-time high is going to be the most bullish scenario you can have because uh, there's just nobody up above to sell in the loss or who's looking to sell uh, who's at a loss who's looking to sell and break even so you can see technically here that the support for Bitcoin is just hanging right around seventy five hundred dollars and you can see we bounced off that so we could very easily get a combined Bitcoin Bitcoin cash price of ten thousand dollars very soon if not within the next day or two 
And again, Bitcoin, it dipped below a $100 billion market cap when that big uh, flippening thing started, but it significantly rallied. Now, there was a story on Zero Hedge about how there was a big buyer who stepped in who was waiting for that. And there's a lot of speculation as to whether Roger Ver, who I don't know if you know who he is, he's the Bitcoin Jesus. He's been in Bitcoin for a long time, and I think he's got about $400 million worth of Bitcoins. His his wallet, there was activity, of, and he was publicly promoting Bitcoin Cash. A lot of people have speculated that it was a, a kind of a pump and dump by the Bitcoin cra cash crowd. I don't know. That that was a lot of money that came into Bitcoin cash. So we'll just have to wait and see. I think I'm bullish on Bitcoin cash. I think it's going higher. Uh, but I think Bitcoin's going higher too. I think that we're going to get that $10,000 combined price here pretty soon. So as far as some of the alts, uh, th there's really not a lot of activity in the altcoins. If we go to the alts here, we've got this gas coin, which is, I think that's a new coin. Um, Doge is getting a little bit of activity, but really we don't have any coins that are showing a lot of activity. That tends to be the case when we have Bitcoin being very strong. Uh, I did notice Florin Coin was the one that I played for quite a lot of profits because I got in so early on that coin and I said I would get back in. I'm getting close. I'm thinking about getting back in. Now this is the price in Bitcoin. Uh, so we're, we're actually getting back down below a thousand. We're down at around 904 and uh, that was close to where I was doing a lot of sells but you have to remember you always have to go and get the dollar price so if you look at this flow chart here it, it looks like uh, flow was just sideways and then had a massive rally and lost all of that value and went back to basically the sideways price but you have to remember that this is quoted in Bitcoin. So if you take a look at it as a quote in dollars, that's not the case. Because if a coin goes sideways in the price of Bitcoin, it's actually going up when Bitcoin is going up. So you can see that reflected here in the all chart on Florin coin. Um, it had the big rally this year and don't go by this old data because it's not accurate but it had the, the big rally this year and you can see that it fell back but uh, where it is right now is about two-thirds of the way towards that old high so it can be very deceptive to go by the price in Bitcoin because the price in dollars could be uh, it could be much higher in a bull phase and you can see here the market cap on uh, Florin coin is above six million, so it's still fairly strong. I'm I'm looking to get back in now. The other one that was the same sort of play was library credits. It has not weakened as much. You can see if we go to the monthly, um, it had a recent rally and then it kind of failed. This is actually looking like a halfway decent buy point for library credits but it's uh, almost twice as high as the all-time low. So it it's, uh, hasn't corrected as much as Florin coin, but both of those are plays on um, that alternative media. And that's a huge story. A lot of people are getting demonetized. They continue to be demonetized. And uh, I'm gonna do a video here coming up on a lot of the back rumors behind uh, the sealed indictments, people talking about Donald Trump taking down the Pizzagate type pedophiles, uh, what's going on in Saudi Arabia, whether that's a purge related to pedophilia, whether there are a lot of arrests coming. Uh, if you go to Benjamin Fulford's site, you can see pictures of uh, Hillary Clinton and, uh, and John McCain wearing the same type of uh, ankle like cast, and people have speculated that's to cover up a ankle um, monitor because they've 
they're under house arrest. So I'm going to go into that in a future video, but let's jump into this Bank of America story. Now, you know my opinion about NASA and my opinion about the spinning ball Earth, but this, this one just absolutely takes the cake because of the absolute stupidity of it. Let's read some of this. In a whimsical 100-plus page report meant to literally drum up interest in investing in an entirely new frontier, Bank of America tries to address the untapped space opportunity from the, pers from the perspective investors. The primer sets out the challenges and opportunities posed by space and predictably concludes that lots of money is to be made. Just call now to book your piece of timeshare monorail equity as we are entering an exciting era in space where we expect more advances in the next few decades than throughout human history. Quote, the original 20th century space race was all about Cold War superpowers and military defense interests. USDOD will remain a key driving force in the new space race. However, we see a raft of new drivers, including private company innovation, SpaceX reusable launch. Now that's a hoax. Uh, the SpaceX is using CGI to pretend like they can land rockets. And that was actually something when I was a kid, that was the first thing that I saw when I, when I was told, uh, or I thought when I was told that we had landed on the moon. My first question was how? How did we land on the moon? Um, how do you land a rocket? Well, you can't land a rocket. That's just basic common sense. It's gonna flip over. But SpaceX has a lot of CGI videos of them landing rockets. Not surprising because uh, they want to convince us that they can reuse rockets. It's, I know, it's ridiculous. Uh, the involvement of new countries, 80 plus countries, with satellites in orbit and falling launch costs. Stakeholder support means strong, uh, as does regulatory backdrop. While B of A is not the first and certainly won't be the last to urge investors to literally send their money into cold vacuum of space where stratospheric opportunities await far from the boring gravitational confines of Earth, what is notable about the report are its attempts to quantify instead of just qualify the opportunity. According to B of A, the numbers are as follows, $339 billion space market today growing to $2.7 trillion dollars by 2045, with B of A making the following clarification. It has traditionally been difficult for companies to make money from space. Really? I can't think of any instance where anyone has made a penny from space, uh, except for the people who've lined their pockets at NASA and all of the uh, related uh, Johnson uh, labs and jet propulsion labs and all these uh, military industrial people <laughs> but there's no wealth being generated by that it's just one gigantic boondoggle with high capex requirements and frequent delays however those wishing to take a truly long-term horizon we see it as one of the final frontiers of investing the market is expected to grow from US 339 billion in 2016 to 2.7 trillion by 2045 over U.S. $16 billion has been invested in space startups since 2000, with 2016 seeing a record $2.8 billion. And as the saying goes, there's a sucker born every minute. And so let's get it. So what are they talking about doing? They're talking about mining space. And this is where the report begins to drift away into countless, countless whimsical tangents where the authors eagerly seek seeks to find, demonstrate, and convince readers of value. Nowhere more so than the following slide, which summarizes the Space Age 2.0 opportunity in a nutshell, and which puts the estimate on the Mars-Jupiter asteroid belt at 700 quintillion, as previously estimated by NASA. And you can see how long this article is. But... I'm not even going to go into the fact that, in my opinion, space doesn't even exist. There isn't even such a thing as space. Uh, I personally believe that we live in an enclosed system, uh, something similar to like uh, a snow globe with, a, with a, a dome or some type of firmament over us 
I don't know if it's round, uh, probably is, probably a round dome, but uh, there is no space. So the idea that we're a spinning ball, spinning around the sun, hurtling through space, all of this, in my opinion, is nonsense. So obviously, this stuff is nonsense. But even if you don't agree with me, even if you hold to a heliocentric view of the universe, um, it's still just absolutely stupid. Even based on that view, we have the problem of re-entering the atmosphere. And according to the, even the heliocentric scientists, things enter the atmosphere, they burn up as they're falling through the atmosphere. When we look to figure out how our astronauts got back in, well, it's just we see this uh, we're not really shown anything, and all of a sudden this capsule is falling with a parachute and lands in the ocean. These guys get picked up. So, of course, it's a gigantic hoax. But the point is, is that to think that you could expend the energy to go out into space, if that were real, and to mine something in space, to bring it back to Earth, and actually think that you could turn a profit... And that they could convince people that that's real um, is it just it boggles the mind. We we already have vast areas uh, as I've shown in previous videos. We have vast unexplored areas on the Earth, including 95 percent of the ocean hasn't even been explored, and they're trying to convince us that it would be more profitable to go out and do our mining in space. So this is. This is just asinine. So what is behind this? Well, it, it's either just going to be their way of creating a giant money sinkhole, perhaps, to just print their way out of the next crisis, or they're setting up some type of gigantic fake reality where there's going to be a fake economy based on a fake reality and they're just going to show us CGI movies of these mining operations. It's like the Red Hot Chili Peppers lyric, uh, space they say is the final frontier but it's made in a Hollywood basement. We're just going to see movies made by NASA and these other companies, not just SpaceX, there are others that are creating these CGI fake uh, landings and uh, fake missions. And it looks like the plan is to just bring us into a completely fake reality and maybe just take the economy with it. I don't know. But I was so shocked by this that anybody, and of course, how does it connect back to silver? Well, it connects back to silver because we believe that silver is, as uh, Steve St. Angelo uh, has often pointed out, we believe that silver is stored energy in the sense that an ounce of silver represents uh, the, the energy that it took to mine it and to manufacture it or smelt it, which means that a tremendous amount of earth was moved uh, a, a certain amount of energy was used and uh, a certain amount of manpower etc to stamp it and make the coins and that when you hold a silver coin in your hand you're holding the wealth of the stored energy and for future investors to get that same ounce of silver they're going to have to expend a similar or larger amount possibly much more expensive amount of energy to get that same ounce of silver. That's what we believe. That's reality. That's what mining is. That's not a fantasy. This is a fantasy. This is a, a fake reality that they're trying to push on the masses. I really don't know if they're that serious about this or if this is just some type of uh, trial balloon that they're sending up, but they've been pushing this fake reality for quite some time so they may actually uh, be planning on having 
a full rollout of this and uh, just have everybody live in a type of science fiction movie. Uh, I don't know how it can possibly be sustained. I don't know where the money's going to come from. And I think it's going to end in a colossal collapse. Even though it's all fake, it's still uh, the printed money is going to have to go somewhere. Uh, the money that's filtered through the military industrial complex obviously is going to be spent somewhere and it will probably cause inflation. Ultimately, things like real silver will end up with real value. Uh, but uh, in the meantime, things like Bitcoin and things that are limited in value, uh, Bitcoin Cash and Bitcoin, watch these two real closely because I think we're going to take out that 10,000 mark. Uh, believe it or not, even though they are quote unquote virtual, they are actually real much more real than the fake reality of space mining. And we'll talk to you next time.